I cannot believe it's been like three, maybe four months since the Svelte 5 release candidate first came out. And since the moment that came out, I've been shipping it. It's been in production for me and I've absolutely been loving it. And today, finally, Svelte 5 has released. This video is not going to be me going through just the announcement, the blog post, all that stuff. If you want a more just kind of general overview of the Svelte 5 release, check out the video I did in collaboration with Theo on his channel. I'll have it linked down below. Great video. Definitely go watch that after this one. But for today in this one, I just want to talk about my opinions on Svelte 5, especially after putting this in production almost three months ago. And spoilers, I absolutely love it. The place I want to start this is actually going to be on probably my biggest negative of Svelte as a framework. I'm going to have very positive things to say about runes, about the new documentation, about the store system about all that stuff it is all fantastic but the one piece that I kind of wanted to talk about is actually going to be snippets and now I'm not complaining about snippets themselves I actually think snippets are really cool and really good the example right here kind of perfectly encapsulates how these can really help make uh, very duplicatable code a lot nicer for if you have this image right here and then you have a figure inside and then it's just an if statement of whether or not we need to wrap that in an a tag instead of having to spin this out into another component or copy paste it, which might have a bunch of different weird things inside of it. You can instead just create a little snippet and then insert that in here and it'll just work. It is a really nice pattern. In the biggest project I've ever built, we are actually using snippets pretty heavily right here in the sidebar, which is shared between these two different pages. This top part right here where you can manage your screeners, that is actually a snippet because when we were building this out, we wanted to share this component, but that part of the logic was very different and it needed to be different between the two different pages. So it was nice just kind of defining that within the page where we already had all that data. And then we just pass in the snippet that just does what it needs to do. It's like passing a component down into the component. It works really well. It feels really good but it doesn't get all the way. And the thing that I really wanted to complain about here is definitely going to be the fact that Svelte still only supports one component per file. It's making strides in that direction with snippets, but it's not all the way. And honestly, snippets just kind of made me miss React, at least that part of React, even more. Because lately, I've been doing a ton of work in React Native, doing stuff there, and I forgot how nice it is to put three, four different components into one file and just kind of break those apart nicely versus in Svelte, the only way you can do that is break them into different files and that really doesn't feel that good. So you often either end up with a ton of different components spread apart files or you end up with a really enormous script tag in some of your bigger, more complex components and projects. It's totally workable and I've gotten around it, but it's something that I would absolutely love to see come to the framework. And for any Svelte people watching this, if anyone on the team is watching, my biggest piece of feedback is definitely, I would love, love, love to see a world where I could put two Svelte components in one file. That would be absolutely phenomenal. But that's enough complaining. I wanna get into the stuff that I think is really good. And the first one is going to be the new rune system. The classic Svelte meme for the longest time was you'd have your React component up here with your use state and all this nonsense that you have to put in there. And then in Svelte, it's just let count equal zero and you have a reactive variable, that's it. It was truly magic and felt really nice and was really simple until it wasn't. And the runes have come in and admittedly made this a lot less, I don't want to say simple, because I actually think runes are a lot simpler than the old model was because they're explicit and you can see exactly what's going on instead of dealing with these just magic reactive variables that just kind of did stuff. And in a smaller component, when you were just working in like a counter or even just like a basic form or something like that, it really wasn't a big deal. But I can tell you, having worked on very big spell projects with very complex front-end code that has tons and tons of state variables, it gets a little bit awkward as a Svelte 4 component when you have so many different let dec declarations and all these different things. And whenever you change one of these variables, it updates the displayed state. It is, in my opinion, almost too magical. And I have absolutely loved working with the new rune system, state, derived, effect, and all the other ones that are in the documentation. They're really, really good. This one might get me in a little bit of trouble, but the way I've honestly thought about these for quite a while is to me, these are just React hooks, but better. State is just use state, but much nicer. There's no getter and setter. It uses signals under the hood instead of react under the hood. It's really smart with like arrays and objects to where if you change a key, a property on an object or you change some entry in an array or you push to it or whatever, it'll update the state of your, um, it'll update the state of your app 
accordingly. They just feel really, really good. Derived is a nice and clean way to just do derived state. And then effect is use effect without a lot of the use effect isms that make it so deeply painful. I've been a reactive for like four years now, so I am very familiar with the use effect foot guns. I have spent many an hour dealing with those, but so far in about, yeah, in about like four or five months, in about three or four months of writing Svelte 5, I have yet to foot gun myself with effect. This might be partially because I'm getting older and better and I'm learning to use effect as little as possible and trying to just do things more declaratively and just like, instead of having a bunch of side effects, just like when you hit the button, do the thing on the button instead of chaining, instead of spinning off a chain of effects. But that's a conversation for another day. Effects though, I have found to be very, very nice. It's like a use effect, it has the same sort of properties, but instead of having to pass a dependency array, since Svelte has a compiler, what we can do is have it just automatically run whenever a state variable changes inside, which is such a nice feeling. It just feels crisp and predictable and completely jank free, which is kind of the spell experience to be honest. This whole thing just feels really rock solid. Now another thing that was pretty controversial when runes were first announced was the store changes. I um, oh man, I cannot believe that it's been, <laughs> it's been over a year since this was announced. That's insane. Time flies. But um, when runes were announced, the sort of comparison that was made is in Svelte 4, there, were, there was the writable syntax, the kind of stores, which were really nice. And those have since been replaced with the new rune system, because not only are the runes nicer in your components, but they also but they're also able to be used outside of just .svelte files. So you can now do in a .svelte.js or a .svelte.ts, you can create these stores. So like this was before, I think they made this change, like now you do have to put a count.svelte.js, so this is old, but um, the, same, the idea is the same. So you can create this create counter function uh, cr initialize a count and then use that count in a bunch of different components and it will work like a normal writable store would. It's, but the controversy was it's not quite as clean and simple as Old Svelte was. In Old Svelte, you just said X word let count equals writable. You did dollar count and that was it. You had your reactive variable that you could share between components and files and all that stuff. But now we need to go through and we need to make this create count function. And then we have to pass the get keyword, whatever the heck that is, because I mean, I will admit this was the first time that I had ever seen the get keyword and I have yet to actually write the get keyword in a project outside of doing it for um, store stuff in Svelte. But this is a real part of JavaScript. And it basically allows us to, in my understanding, correct me if I'm wrong on this, but we return a reference to this. Um, it allows us to return a like getter or a reference to this guy right here instead of just returning a copy of the value. So that when we create our counter, we're not just gonna return zero every time, we're gonna return a, a reference which gets the current state variable of count rune. And then we're also returning this increment function which does count root plus equals one. And admittedly, in like a meme screenshot like this, it definitely does look like, you know, we're getting a lot more boilerplate in Svelte 5. But if you look closer at this, this is actually doing a lot more than this was. Because over here, we're actually not exposing a way to just mutate the variable however we want. We're only exposing a get function right here, which will allow us to get the value of it, but we can't set it off of that. So the only way we can set it is to increment it. So we basically created like a little incrementer right here. And over here, we can just kind of use it willy nilly. And you could make tighten this up a little bit to make it nicer if we didn't want to do that. But admittedly, I don't think it will ever be quite this simple but I don't actually think that's a bad thing in the real world. And I wanted to bring up this tweet from Thomas Lopez, who's a really great guy in the Svelte community. He's building Melt UI, Svelte ambassador, doing a bunch of great stuff. If you're not following him, but you're following me, make sure to go follow him. And basically what he said, this was also a year ago, but what he said is that the biggest advantage of runes is code reusability. And he went through and made this little code example, putting these back to back. So in the Svelte 4 example, what he's doing is this is a slightly more complex version of the counter thing where we can go through and increment it and it will give us a derived is even, a derived is odd, a derived doubled. So what he's doing in here is he's using the old syntax for a writable right here to get the count. And then he's getting the doubled count by passing in the count variable and then running a derived function off of that. And then the same thing all the way down. And funny enough, this is admittedly kind of skill issues because when I first started um, Svelte, when I first started writing Svelte, it was honestly like two months or so before the Svelte 5 announcement. I think it was like summer of 2023. So the thing that I really never got into before that uh, was actually the kind of writable syntax. I never really had a use for it, so I hadn't done much with it. 
So I wasn't familiar with this derived keyboard before I even looked at this example. And the first time I did, I thought that there was some weird reactive stuff going on here, partially because there's no syntax highlighting. It's basically an effect so that whenever we change any of these values, we console.log out the changes. And then we create this increment function, this decrement function, and then finally we return all this stuff down here. So that's how we create a counter in Svelte 4, which is admittedly, and at least in my opinion, a little bit less simple than just the raw writable example when we're getting into derives and doing more complex stuff there. Versus when we go over to the Svelte 5 preview, this gets way nicer and way more readable very quickly. So we have our state variable, it's just state. We have our derived, just pass in the state variable times two, and then we get a new reactive derived value. Then we make our increment function, make our decrement function, make an effect for console.logging, return our getters to just get these values, pass it, return out an increment, return out a decrement, and suddenly we have a working implementation right here. And I personally think that this is a lot better. This allows you to build more complex stores easier. I've done this actually in my applications. I tried out building like an authentication store using classes, not all the nonsense in classes that everyone is against and I am too. No weird inheritance stuff, no weird polymorphism stuff, no, none of that stuff. Just basically putting a couple state variables in there giving them a couple methods to interface with them and then calling it good is a really nice way of doing it. I think overall the stores change has been very, very positive and I've actually really liked, I've actually really liked working with these in my projects. The way they just work and feel is great. There's a couple SSR gotchas that you need to know. I've made videos about that in the past, but overall it's great stuff. And to end this off, I did want to quickly talk about the new documentation site. I go through this deeply in Theo's videos. So if you made it this far on this one, you will definitely like that one. But this is just really a beautiful site. The team absolutely killed it on this. I really like it. Um, Rich's blog about the Omni site and the way they kind of designed it and the changes they wanted to make. I like the kind of vibe that like Vite has and a lot of these other tools do, but it is cool to see kind of like a, it's a different take on the documentation. It's a different font. It's kind of a different vibe, but it feels really good. The new documentation for Svelte is fantastic. They've migrated over the Svelte kit documentation to all be in one place, which is great. The tutorial has been updated to once again be in the same place, and it's a really, really great tutorial. And then really the biggest last thing I wanted to say is that the Svelte 5 migration guide is awesome. If you are currently on Svelte 4, the story of getting from 4 to 5 is really easy. You can just upgrade the package, change nothing, and it'll work because components can run in either runes mode or um, I don't actually know what they call the classic mode. Maybe it's classic mode, maybe it's Svelte 4 mode. I don't really know. But there's runes mode and not runes mode basically. And as long as you don't have any runes in there, you can keep using classic Svelte reactivity as you slowly migrate those over. I think that might be removed in like Svelte 6 or Svelte 7. I feel like I heard them say that somewhere. They might not have, I don't fully remember. But the actual migration guide for doing all this stuff is just fantastic. So overall, I am very, very, very happy with Svelte 5. I think they absolutely killed it. I'm extremely excited to see what the future of Svelte looks like. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you like and subscribe, and I will talk to you again soon.